With Halo Infinite in its final stages of its lifespan, I think it's a good time to talk about the future of Halo's multiplayer. And lucky for me, I officially have my Mega Platinum credit card, so it sort of feels like it's a perfect time to jump into the next installment. Halo 7 has clearly not only been on my mind, but in the mind of most content creators ever since 3 for 3 announced that most of their devs have moved on to the next game. With certain affinities seemingly leading the charge in the next multiplayer expansion on the Unreal Engine, the big question is, what do we want to see in Halo 7's multiplayer? What would be the essentials to make the next game feel like a perfect Halo title? How do we address the customization in the godforsaken store? And what's the special sauce to make the future of Halo's multiplayer the best it could be? Let's overspend in the Halo shop, pray for 4 to save our ass, and jump right into this. So when looking at the current state of Halo multiplayer, fans have mixed feelings about our overall experience. The gameplay of Halo Infinite hits all the right ways, being a perfect balance between classic Halo titles like Halo 3 to a modern look of what we want to see with sprint and updated equipments. Now let me be clear, Halo Infinite has flaws in its multiplayer for sure, and I will crap on them for their missteps, but you can't tell me that this doesn't feel like a classic era title. I feel like for the longest time, fans have always wanted a clear successor to the original Halo 3 formula, and every time we wanted another Halo 3, we kept getting mutations of Halo that really did not hit. Whether it was the fun yet drastically different variant of Halo Reach, which was basically the precursor to the Destiny method, because clearly that game killed it, or Halo 4's Black Ops garbage model, I mean, who doesn't like broken kill streaks? Or Halo 5's ultra fast, sweat your balls off, Titanfall ripoff. I mean, all had their own benefits being unique to Halo, but unfortunately were worser versions of the original title that we all wanted. And along the way, we had some solid ideas like Warzone, Blood Infection, upgraded weapons with unique traits, all pretty good stuff. But in the end, they all went back to being just crap. Guys, Warzone is the biggest game mode in Halo history. 12v12 battles with so many vehicles and enemy AI. This is just too much fun. Hopefully there's no like money grubbing policy that will just be added to this. Well, go after yourself. We need money. Go gamble on loot boxes and never unlock refills of your favorite vehicles. So you're saying that if I put in my credit card, and destroy my credit score, then maybe I can actually unlock the Norfang? I mean, I do want a lot of kills. 3 for 3 sort of has been all over the place with their ideas when it comes to what type of multiplayer game they want to mirror, and it sort of feels like they're just chasing trends rather than actually being themselves. They took what's popular that year and say, you know what, let's make a Halo version of this. Black Ops is getting a lot of hype. Let's do a Halo version of that, but actually make it worse in every way. That would be a pretty good strategy. Or Titanfall is getting a lot of fans jumping into the games. Let's ramp up the speed so it feels like you just did a line of coke and let's get people hyped being Superman flying across maps. I mean, that's what we need. Spartans not only looking like straight up tanks, but now have the ability to ground pound a tank and take it out within a minute. You know what I'm thinking? Stella Blade is getting a lot of attention. Maybe we should get Chief in one of those body suits. We don't need Chief anymore. Let's just get some thick ass chick like Tifa. And I think we're all good. I mean, it's kind of hilarious that literally every older Halo fan watched as the franchise they knew changed completely and younger Halo audiences still to this day adore Halo 5's gameplay loop. But when I look at Halo Infinite, it has proven to me one thing about 3 for 3. They have great ideas at times. They come off as a studio that in starting to get get an idea of what fans might like, but then at the same time, they make the dumbest decisions that hurt their momentum and cause blunders to make their fan base groan with their inability to not get anything right. And because of this, certain affinity has now been called to the table to help 3 for 3 actually put out a multiplayer game that doesn't suck ass. Now with us moving into the next era of Halo, the question most people wonder is what should we see in Halo 7 to make it a successful game past its first six months of its release. I think it first all starts with the gameplay. I think this next statement may get me the most hate, but I'm just gonna say it. I'd much rather have Halo 7's gameplay closer to Halo Infinite rather than Halo 3. I know this may cause some hate to be thrown into the comment section, but hold off on that send button. Let me explain. Let's think about the golden days of Halo. You just mashed into a big team battle game on Valhalla. You slightly jogged to possibly get into a wraith and it was taken. Then a warthog and it's gone. Well, I guess the only solution I have left is to slow walk my way all the way to the battlefield to find a weapon. And just as you get there, you get killed. And unfortunately that continues to be the process over and over again. The issue with this situation is not that the gameplay with Hill 3 is bad, 
because it's absolutely amazing, especially because you're playing in a condensed maps and modes like Team Slayer. But the real issue is that in a modern age, the gameplay may need to be adjusted to fit more of what the general audience wants. Now, let me be clear. I'm a Halo fan, and I have been one since Halo CE, so I have been gaming with Chief since the age of five. But even I can see that those scenarios can be frustrating especially when you play a squad of players that have spawns on lock and you have a slim window to avoid being killed. I do not think we need to speed the game up more than what we currently see in Halo Infinite because I feel like the game speed of what it is right now is sort of perfect between the classics and the modern age. I'm not looking for us to return to Halo 5's ultra shreddy Cheeto Dust gameplay, but also not trying to have us go back to the Stone Age and pretend that Master Chief, a straight up super soldier Chad, can't actually jog with a gun in his hand. Continuing with the use of equipment seems like the best answer of all the 3 for 3 era Halo games since it is not increasing the Spartan abilities like we saw in Halo 5, turning us into straight up Iron Man variants. But it gives a variety of the sandbox which can provide a sense of strategy when picking up equipment. Are there rockets that are clapping your teammates cheeks? Well maybe grab a repulsor and throw that shit back. Have a wasp causing you some troubles? Maybe we need a grapple jack to really piss off the pilot. And maybe if you're not thinking that far ahead like a loser like me, the fact is 3 for 3's equipment in Halo Infinite were extremely fun to use and they don't break the flow of the game causing fans to throw their arms in the air in disgust. I think in the next Halo Mainline multiplayer, we should take the fan favorites of Halo Infinite's multiplayer equipment, guns, and gameplay and just expand on it. As much as the gameplay loop for Infinite felt like smooth butter, their lack of guns is what killed a lot of fans' hopes and dreams. So my solution for Halo 7, take the guns of Halo Infinite and all the previous installments and add them to the game. I know, crazy thought. I, I honestly think it might work. With nearly 25 years approaching on Halo's first release, we have a great opportunity to treat this game like it's an anniversary of the series being reborn. And what type of gift should we give to the Halo on its 25th birthday, other than being able to rent a car? Maybe we treat the sandbox with the best of the best guns and vehicles from the franchise and bring it to the forefront. Make it where anyone who's played a Halo game could recognize guns used in this title. And even if you add new weapons, we at least know that at launch, we won't lose the fan favorites that got us hooked in the first place. The battle rifle, the DMR, the grenader, the brute shot, the freaking Spartan laser. Did you forget we used to actually have a good shotgun for literally every Halo game? Except for Infinite, of course. We cannot, and I mean, we cannot follow in the same trend of not having any guns or vehicles releasing in this next game because if we do, then it will feel like a swift kick in the nuts and the game will crash harder than a fat dude falling over. Which Halo game do you think Halo 7's gameplay should mirror the most? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you liked the video so far. Now one of the most underrated aspects of Halo has always been its customization. And I feel like Halo 7's customization needs to set the standard for what we can do with our Spartan. I know this may sound like a crazy task, but I don't think it will be. If you were to take a moment and think of which Halo game had the best use of customization in the series, most people will either give one of two answers. Halo Reach or Halo Infinite. And yes, I know for Halo Infinite, you need the new mega platinum heavy interest rate credit card to unlock the best armors since most of them are behind a paywall. But even the free content is pretty damn good. Both games made it a standard to have the ability to customize your Spartan with hundreds to thousands of combinations between armors, which honestly made the game's multiplayer unique. Yes, we always had our boys Master Chief's sick ass armor to start, but with the idea of Spartan 3s or Spartan 4s, the possibilities become endless of what we could do with our customization. And no, I'm not asking for Halo 7 to have an Elden Ring or Baldur's Gate level of character creator. I'm not trying to customize the shape of my Spartan's penis or something, but Halo 7 needs to look back at the past and say, huh, I guess fans really want the ability to customize their Spartan's colors and emblems in any wacky combo they want. Maybe I shouldn't restrict them to only have a certain set of shaders and be a complete dickbag. This isn't Destiny, this is Halo. I think Halo 7 doesn't need to stray too far away from what works and that is to stick as close to how Halo Reach and Halo Infinite had set up their customization, as well as avoid the stupid decisions by suits over at Microsoft. If I were to make my dude royal blue and mega vomit green, then let me do it. Give us the ability to customize our character any way we want 
without those restrictions because it honestly hurts player choice. Especially when you think about player progression and this so-called shop, I think Halo 7 needs to find the perfect balance of something that is way too easy to progress through, as well as something that feels rewarding. In a perfect world, I'd love to say, no shop, end it here, get rid of this thing and send it to the Shadow Realm. But we all know that's not going to happen. There will be a shop in the future, but why not look to your competition and just learn? Helldivers 2 had implemented a shop and sold the game at $40. Yes, you can progress through the game with so much different ways to unlock content, but there is a shop for anyone that feels spicy and wants to just speed through the process and just buy all the exclusive gear on your own. I think that Halo 7 should take the aspects of Halo Reach with in-game credits that give you the option to buy armors when they become available when you level up, then provide an option for players to buy certain items individually, especially if they want to buy something specific. Instead of me having to buy a bundle of ugly ass armors just so I can get one armor piece that I really wanted while cursing the heavens that I had to waste $30 on stupid crap. That way, Halo 7 would have a real way to earn items just for being dedicated to the game and sweating your ass off, as well as unique items that might require a few bucks to drop on. I mean, I don't mind spending money on something that is really cool or interesting, like, you know, a Snoop Dogg AI. But imagine 343 said, hey, I know you guys wanted playable elites in the game. Pay eight bucks and you'll get an entire new customization tier will unlock alien armors. You know how many people would jump on that? It would sell as high as the cat-eared Spartans. What I think caused fans to be so angry with the shop overall was the fact that it was so overpriced for such little amount of unlocks that since there was so much put behind a paywall, instead of actually earning these armors, it just caused so much anger and frustration. I mean, no one in their right mind wants their credit card to be more important Halo multiplayer than actually playing the game and being good. My call for Halo 7 is to do right by the fan base and have a game full of earnable content with sprinkles of shop items not the other way around. And I think the big underlying emphasis I'm making here is that we should have a real progression system that is centered around actually playing the game. I know it's wild to think, but I'd much rather be rewarded for playing rather than have to pay money out of my pocket. You know what makes COD games nowadays so boring to play? Other than being completely mediocre, the big issue the last two Modern Warfare titles had was they shared the same progression system, and worse, every unlockable weapon or skin we gained just carried over. So basically, instead of having a prestige and progressing through all the weapons, all of our progress just carries over and we have nothing to work for. And I'm somewhat happy to hear that with Black Ops 6, they're actually returning to the old method so that we don't have this over repetitive bullshit that we have and saw in the last game. But the bottom line is we want something to grind for. Fans want to sit there and say, hey, I want to play X amount of games because I have this shiny new armor or emblem that I unlock for reaching a certain rank. Then they want to wear that new unlockable to show off to the community that they actually did that shit. You know how long I wore the Hibusa armor from Halo 3 ever since I unlocked it back in the day? Considered to be one of the hardest helmets to obtain since you need to obtain every single skull in Halo 3's legendary campaign. But once you unlock it, you are considered the ultimate chat. I wore that shit everywhere. I would have wore it in person just to show it off if I actually had the chance. I think my point in patting myself on the ass is to emphasize what made classic Halo game progression so good. Give rewards to those people playing the game and force them to grind to complete challenges. A fan base that has something to do is a happy fan base. If you look at one of the biggest problems Halo Infinite had was that up until two years into the game, we didn't have any ranks to obtain for just playing. I mean, most multiplayer games have this, but for some reason, 3 for 3 thought, well, you know what, this shit don't matter. Halo 7 should have a ranking progression system as well as a challenge system that rewards players for playing while earning armors, emblems, and skins. Just give us the standard that previous titles had. Now, I know I just gave a massive dump on the customization section, but one of the most important things that made Halo so much fun for years was the various modes and playlists that were always present. Halo multiplayer has always been known as one of the top arena multiplayers out there, mainly because of the various ways to play. You want 4v4 objective game modes? Halo has that. You want a large scale warfare with vehicles? Halo has that too. Want wacky modes like Rift Ball or Infection? I think you get the picture. I think throughout the years, Halo has influenced many FPS games to adopt several modes that were first introduced in the Halo franchise. And I feel like that's what made Halo so great is that it has something for everybody. Now in the last few Halo games, especially with Halo Infinite, 
I've noticed a trend. The games have been released with not all the content actually there at release. I don't know whose bright idea it was to actually try to do this without thinking anyone would notice, but damn. Hey pal, you just blowing from stupid town? I mean, we literally just got a multi-team playlist in the testing phase for Halo Infinite nearly three years after its initial release. I know 3 for 3 has been incompetent, but this is a new level of crap. Nearly every Halo game up until Halo 5 and Infinite have released with a plethora of game modes and maps ready to play for the general public. And unfortunately, in this era of modern gaming, we have seen longer development windows with less content ready at release, which not only is baffling with roughly six years of development, but just sad knowing how much Halo has changed over the years. Infinite has lost much of its momentum and fan base in the first six months since its first release because it didn't have anything to do. If you remember back when it first dropped, everyone thought that when they released the multiplayer first in a sort of beta state, we were saying, okay, well, it's fun right now, but when the game finally drops, we're gonna get a lot more playlists, right? Then they had their official release and nothing changed. Only four to five playlists to play with 10 maps to start. It was extremely bare bones. And this first season lasted for the entirety of six months, which gave me heartburn. So when it comes to Halo 7, I feel like the simple answer is to have all the standard playlists that we love from the classic games available at launch. So if that means it takes longer for you to have all these modes ready, then so be it. But don't release the game in chunks and expect fans to be like, oh, okay, I guess we just need five months for another map to be added to the game. I mean, I'm a Halo fan for life, but I'm gonna be furious if my favorite playlist, Big Team Battle, doesn't have more than three maps to play at its release. And then I have to wait six months for us to at least drop one more Big Team Battle map. We should be expanding on what Halo Infinite has now and only continue to grow our playlist and maps even after the release. If we have three tiers of playlists, 4v4, 8v8, and 12v12, that means we should have a dedicated set of maps for all these different playlists already built into the game. Even the mini game playlists like Husky Raid, Infection, Riftball, there needs to be a dedication to making these maps for these playlists so we have fun in these different variable ways to play instead of us having to wait months upon months to finally get to see these in action. Because if you think drip feeding content like maps and modes into Halo is a good strategy, then you will see the next Halo multiplayer fall before it ever gets its footing. And I think the best way to keep the playlist and maps flowing into the game is to prioritize Forge to be ready at launch. So far, every game in the franchise that has used Forge never really had it ready for day one. But most times, the games had enough content that it never really was a priority. But when it came to Halo Infinite, Forge saved this title from dying for most of its lifespan. The fans dove into the gunk and the crap and made stunning maps and modes that gave the community something to do. And 3 for 3 made it a goal to use as much of the Forge content as humanly possible. And yes, I love Forge maps and modes, but it sort of got to the point where 3 for 3 was only using fan-made stuff, making us feel like they had a total of five devs working on the studio. I don't mind having Forge maps incorporated into the game, but 3 for 3 also needs to get off their asses and actually have content made by them right off the bat. Literally, it feels like it's just free labor. It just sounds like slavery with extra steps. Ooh la la, someone's gonna get laid in college. I mean, yeah, so can you make us a remade map of Guardian? Make sure it incorporates all of Infinite's movement styles, add weapons, and have it ready for all the modes that we have available. Oh, it's ready? Well, wait, you wanna be paid? Dumb bitch. Sure. But I do have to say, if Forge is ready to roll day one, then not only can 3 for 3 pump in their own maps, but the fans will be able to jump right away and take advantage of this powerful Forge tool. What I would be interested in seeing is how 3 for 3 will give fans the freedom to use the Unreal Engine to help develop maps. Because we have seen people already do this on their own and it's actually pretty crazy with how amazing some of these showcases look. Forge will grant a little bit of breathing room for devs so that they can get back up from some of the community while also showing us what they have. Now don't get me wrong, Forge doesn't fix all the fears that it could come with playlists and map design for the next Halo game. But what makes Forge so important to the development of any Halo title is that it now gives the power to create maps and it hands it directly to the fans. And with the ability to make our own ways to play, it actually provides an incentive to stay in the game which is beneficial to the Halo franchise. The importance of Forge in keeping Halo Infinite afloat for so long shows the power that it really has. And my hope is that Halo 7 will not only have their own set of maps for all the various playlists, but use Forge as the backbone or support to not only bring back classics, 
but to make maps on their own. Now, what I think is the most important aspect or the secret sauce to fix the outlook of Halo's multiplayer for the future Halo titles is to emphasize on the mix between social and sweaty features of Halo's multiplayer. If you have played Halo Infinite in the last two years, what was one thing you noticed about every game you've joined in on? Did you notice that the games always felt like they were extremely intense, like you needed a towel for your sweat? That you could never just sit back and enjoy some random games without having to feel like you have to snort some Cheeto dust to be ready for a showdown? Well, you aren't alone. Most fans I've talked to always say the same thing. Every game feels like a ranked lobby. And that was the intention behind the skill-based matchmaking system. I made a video breaking down what skill-based matchmaking is and went into both the positives and the negatives. And other than just keeping lobbies fair, for newer players, there really isn't much positive of an overly restrictive skill-based system. And since Halo 5, the system has only gotten worse, where there have been confirmed reports of an MMR or a matchmaking ranking that is made independently by the devs to secretly rank players to always make the games competitive, even in social matches. Wait a second, did you say competitive social matches? That literally breaks the entire concept of social games as a whole. It's like telling people, hey, join this social playlist and just sit back and relax. Okay. Remember the days where you can join a game of Team Slayer? And sure, it can be competitive because that's what most FPS games are. But the difference between a game mode where you have to actually try versus be at your very best or you're going to get your cheeks clapped is pretty crazy. Halo was built on this social games concept and it actually had gained so much of its fan base because of these features that most other games don't really have anymore. Here's a quick list of things that were in older Halo games that were completely removed in a newer era of Halo titles. Pre and post game lobbies, proximity chat, continuing matchmaking with groups post match, the inability to seamlessly check out Spartans in your lobby, the veto system, freaking split screen, and there's more. But think that we all had this as a standard for Halo games, but in the last decade, we started to lose all of these features, which only made Halo games feel more isolated rather than prioritizing what made these games so fun. So many people had loved Halo from the beginning because they had made these relationships through these titles. And it sort of feels like a spit in the face of those that love these systems since they're deemed not important, when they were actually the backbone of what made Halo so good. So when seeing 3 for 3 not only remove these features, but then increase the skill-based matchmaking to the levels of Call of Duty, there's a problem here. My suggestion is to make a clear distinction between social and ranked lobbies, not just by name, but actual systems that make sense. Social matches that do not incorporate a rank for your Spartan should not include any sort of skill-based matchmaking at all, since that sort of breaks the whole purpose of the game mode in the first place. There have been games like X Defiant that have incorporated this same styling and there's been a lot more fun when it comes to just the basic game modes in playing. I think there could be safeguards for those newer players to compete against noobs at first, then introduce them to the rest of the gaming community of veterans, but for the most part, everyone should not be ushered into specific lanes of competition in social modes like Slayer. I don't want to have to bring my towel for my sweat if I just want to sit back and relax and play Halo. Sometimes it feels like if I don't have a good game, my team crumbles and we get blown out by 30. And I sort of feel like I'm Michael Jordan carrying my team on my back and I don't want to have to do that all the time. I know it sounds crazy, but ranked lobbies should be solely dependent on your rank. You might think that's the norm, but for some reason 3 for 3 had the bright idea to organize people based on their MMR rather than their actual rank. And by using this logic, if you are a ranked Diamond 3 in Team Slayer, you should be matching against other Diamond Rank 3s or 4s or 5s that are similar in scale of your skill. However, because 3 for 3 likes to shoot themselves in the foot, they use MMR, which is a hidden ranking system, to then couple people together. So now I am playing against those similar to my MMR, which incorporates all of your gameplay, your social, your big team battles, your rank, and puts them all into a specific ranking system. So there are times where me being a Diamond 3 are then getting put against lobbies of Onyx level players, which makes no sense just because we're closer in MMR than actual rank. So I could lose to a team of Onyx players, which would hurt my chances of leveling up past Diamond which infuriates me. If you create a ranking system, then just go by that system and rank lobbies. It's sort of creating a magical math equation to understand why you get put into certain lobbies, and it feels like not even 3 for 3 fully understands what the hell this system is. So if that's the case, then don't do it. I don't like math either. Ranked playlists should have ranked lobbies, 
and social shouldn't have any of that crap. And if you want to please the fans, look back to Halo 3 and how they incorporate social features and just mirror the way the game was built. Have split screen, have proximity chat, post in pre-game lobbies, a veto system. Have it where it encourages players to talk to one another and not be isolated loners. Halo has always been built on social features, and if you remove one of the most important aspects of what made Halo so fun, then you'll lose the soul of what the game was meant to be. In a previous video, I had mentioned that Halo 7 has now become one of the most important titles for the entirety of the franchise. And I hate to be the one that elevates the stakes of this game because I feel like putting so much pressure on anything can cause the devs to break down. And whether the next Halo game is a Halo CE remake or a multiplayer dependent title or a mix of the two, the next Halo multiplayer needs to look back at the past and take the concepts that made the fans fall in love with the series in the first place and bring them here. Halo Infinite was a failure in what it was promised to be in the beginning with its horrible launch. But what we ended up seeing 343 do later in its lifespan, making it a fun experience to play, did give me hope that maybe, I mean just maybe, 343 could listen to the fans and deliver an experience that takes the best aspects of gameplay and feel of Halo and bring it to the modern era. I think with a new game, fans are eager to see what is in store for the next installment and many, including myself, consider this to be a blank slate. And with the news that Certain Affinity is helping with the next project, my warning is this, take the opportunity to deliver an experience that it learns from the past so that fans can feel at ease knowing that Halo is heading in the right direction. If fans love the gameplay of Infinite, but just despise the fact that there was nothing to do, then don't just ignore their voice. Embrace it. Take what worked well for Infinite and add the necessary pieces that would have made the game great. Don't just follow trends of the modern times. Set your standards for Halo and keep the soul of what made these games fun. I can guarantee if you deliver on a Halo title that continues what fans love from the classics while bringing it to the modern era, then Halo will not only regain its momentum as a stable franchise in the FPS genre, but as a legendary series that a new era of fans will love to jump into. If you're interested in the future of Halo, I give a good and bad of a possible Halo CE remake. Go check out the video in the end screen and let me know what you think. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.